Okay, we are ready for new business item number two, which will be to conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning property from R1 single family residential district and M1 residential industrial district to M1 residential residential industrial district. Restricted. Restricted, I'm sorry. Restricted industrial district. The 2.16 acre property is located at 604 West Main Street. The application is filed by Rose Design Building Incorporated on behalf of Five Star Trucking LLC. Okay, I've got everything working now. Okay, we'll go over. Okay. Uh, the current zoning, the um, there are four different parcels, two of which are currently zoned M1, which is the industrial district, and uh, the northern two of those are zoned R1, which is the single family residential district. If approved, the rezoning would take the entire area to the M1 district and industrial district. Uh, the existing conditions I've got from the zoning overlaid on top of the aerial photo. Uh, you can see um, a little bit better view of the, the aerial view um, at the left. And then a photograph of the subject property from 2009 uh, at the blue building. The aerial view, you can see there is an existing building. Uh, there's a gravel parking area. Um, you can sort of tell from the aerial photo that it hasn't been particularly well maintained throughout the years. To uh, give you a little background, we did have a site plan come before the Planning Commission in 2010 for a smaller version of this uh, on only the two lots that are already zoned in one. Uh, that site plan was approved, uh, but it did expire a few months ago because it was never uh, constructed. The applicant, part of the reason that they did not pursue the um, building permits for the previous plan was because they had wanted all along to have a larger area for uh, the truck parking on the north side of the building, and so they uh, were trying to acquire the lots to the north to so that they could expand the plan. Uh, they have since acquired those lots, and the vacant lots are zoned R1, which is why they need the rezoning um, request. Uh, the expanded site plan includes the same basic layout, uh, but it does expand on the north side with the larger truck parking lot, also as a outdoor uh, semi-open tire storage area on the north side of the building and a fuel storage tank uh, towards the north end of the site. Uh, the property will also need to be replatted to join the lots together uh, so that the entire development will be on one parcel, uh, which is the reason for the preliminary final class. Uh, because it is a minor subdivision, those are allowed to go simultaneously. Uh, for the rezoning, uh, the future land use map uh, does show the site to be reserved for commercial uses, not industrial. Uh, however, the US 56 Corridor Management Plan has been adopted more recently than the future land use map. In looking at the future land use map with the old layout for the road, um, may have made a little bit more sense for a larger commercial area uh, right there and perhaps um, something that hasn't been uh, thoroughly vetted, but a potential could um, maybe reduce that with the new layout uh, because the traffic will be diverting up Waverly Road and over on Santa Bay Street as opposed to straight through on 56. Uh, the property um, to the east and to the west are zoned industrial uh, M1 zoning so you do have that as well. Uh, for the, uh, the both of the plats, the preliminary and the final, uh, here are the images of those on your screen. Uh, you can see that the final plat uh, just brings it to a single lot. And there is a truck movement diagram on the preliminary plat. Uh, building elevations, I want to emphasize that these are not uh, colors provided by the applicant, um, but using the labels on the plan that sort of estimated what it might look like in color. Um, so you can see it says a metal building with uh, 
uh, concrete masonry units along the base of the east, west, and south facade. Uh, the landscaping, most of needs requirements, uh, trees, um, there are a few trees within the easement. Those would be at the property owner's risk. Uh, if utility work needs to be done and the trees have to be removed, the owner would be responsible for making sure that those trees get replaced. Uh, the property perimeter landscaping uh, was looked at along the north property line. Um, later in the review process, staff realized that the 45 foot stretch along the east property line that would be adjacent to our own lot had not been addressed. Um, so some additional trees may need to be required there. Uh, however, there are utility easements in the detention basin, um, which may make it more difficult. Since they, um, the new regulations that require property from their landscaping do allow for a reduction when a solid fence uh, helps to screen the view. Um, so there is a potential that, you know, if they can't be put there, that they <coughs> might be able to work around that. Uh, the trash enclosure uh, there on the right, um, and that would match the building materials used for the building. And then there's the diagram showing how the interior parking lot landscape was calculated. The site plan meets height and setback requirements, provides parking for 30 trucks behind the gate. Uh, there are six spaces provided for the offices at the front of the building. Uh, the outdoor tire storage area would be on the north side. North is at the left in all of these pictures because um, the side of the long is getting out and turn it sideways. Um, and the outdoor storage area would be screened by wood fencing and building walls on the east and the south. Uh, one of the issues that in the staff report was regarding the shadow box fence. Um, the a solid fence is required, and the applicant has proposed a shadow box fence. The definition of a shadow box fence um, specifically excludes staggered fencing, uh, which is another term for the shadow box style. However, the shadow box fence could be adjusted to um, effectively be a solid fence. If you look at the images on the upper left, you can see the fence as it was proposed by the applicant. Um, and then below that is the image from the stipulation the staff is recommending uh, regarding how the spacing could be done to achieve better screening. Um, you can see in the photograph how you can see through it from an angle even though you can't see through it um, if you're just looking straight at it perpendicularly. Um, so then, to sort of give an example, of this, kind of hard to see on the, the lower right, but there are some lines drawn showing sort of where that view could be seen through the overhead cross section. Um, and so with the fence that was proposed, you can see there's a much wider area between the fence class that you can see through staff's recommendation would bring that down closer to what you would expect with a normal uh, privacy fence uh, because there does need to be some space in the regular privacy fence for the spot out tickets to expand. Mm -hmm. um, for the access, the site would use the existing driveway. Uh, KDOT did issue a right of way permit for the previous site plan, uh, which has expired. Um, so the KDOT permit is also expired, so that would need to be renewed. The dry bottom detention basin at the northeast corner of the site would discharge to a ditch along the east property line. Uh, the applicant uh, hopes to regrade that ditch to improve drainage um, so that along the property line, the eastern property owner's permission is uh, being needed for that. Photometric plan is shown um, with sort of highlighted um, around the dots that are you know, based on the number of foot handles. Um, anything less than one is not 